Welcome back to another one, you guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Mr. By the Mile, I'm an ABF Freight Lion Hall Teamster driver, and Judy McReynolds, our CEO, was on this interview here with CNBC, and I don't know this reporter's name, but I'm going to leave a link to this conversation in the description box below, and then I'm also going to be inserting some clips along the way in this video so that you guys can kind of get a idea of what was uh, spoken about in this interview. For YouTube, the videos that I'm showing you, fair use. Logistics company ArcBest says that trends are improving in August, despite some recent concerns of a freight recession. The company serves the manufacturing of retail industries and has seen its stock rise 46% year to date, easily outperforming the transport's ETF. I'm going to go real quick right here through the comment section, which isn't very deep. It's only 15, 16 comments deep. I left a couple of links in that description box with a few of my videos concerning these layoffs. As you guys know, most of you have probably already seen a couple of videos that I made concerning the layoffs. I was laid off July 16th, but I was already off on an injury. I needed my supraspinatus and subscapularis tendons repaired with basically shoulder cuff, rotator cuff repair surgery. <clears throat> and right here, David Daniel says, a great company. Hopefully it gets back to normal. I was one of the drivers that was given a three-day notice for layoff. July 16th. So he was obviously probably here in Southern California. There's a Mark Abraham says ABF freight system is simply the best in the transportation industry. Nobody does it better. Thanks to all the hardworking employees from the bottom to the top. You union laborers, you and I, we make it happen. And our other brothers at XPO, Saya, Estes, Old Dominion, understand that you guys aren't safe in this economy either. It'd behoove you to definitely have union protection, but everybody does what it is that they fit to do for themselves and their families. So I'm not here to tell you what to do or that you should go union or, you know, just take the time to consume some of my content and other union laborers' content that are explaining the benefits, the pension, all that sort of thing to you. and uh, make a decision that is best for you. Uh, in the end, we are the ones making the companies rich, you and I. No matter what, union, non-union, doesn't matter. The companies are rich simply because of us. And then, of course, good management. A video I did on Yellow Freight with them going down, total irresponsibility on behalf of the CEO, of the CEOs, the company's part. And these investors, you know, you allow too many investors into your game and you're going to lose eventually. It's, investors have too much say when it comes to hardworking Americans' livelihoods and it's, it's, it's getting out of hand. Continuing on with more comments here. There's a Panther employee here. I'll, I'll get to his comment here in a second. If you're at Panther, definitely be careful. Um, they're getting laid off as well. And from what I'm hearing... There's going to be record number of layoffs when it comes to Panther. Here on the union side, we do have certain protections via our collective bargaining agreement and or union contract. So in this interview, Judy also admitted indirectly, and I'll leave the clip here. Whenever you consider the, the wages and benefits, which our employees are very well compensated, including the benefits. And so, but the first year is 13 and a half percent increase. So we, we had a big jump increase um, really to get us to the right place, you know, to start from a market competitive wage standpoint. And then, you know, as you go through the contract period, it's, it's you know, pretty normal is long, what I'd say for this environment. Is it a four? Five, it's five, five years. Okay. So five year contract on that. You are going to be able to offset some of that with some cuts that you've done yourself. Some, That's right. Some price cuts that you've done internally. So how do you deal with well, that? Well, we, we did. Um, we just, you know, when you have uh, your business, um, you know, performing uh, with a, a lower number of shipments, at least that's what we were experiencing in the second quarter, we review things, make sure that we've got our resources aligned with that, whether it's, you know, something that we're purchasing outside. Sometimes we use cartage agents, uh, rented equipment, those kinds of things. Those typically will go first, 
as things that you'll reduce out because you just don't have the shipments to support them. Um, and then other changes that we, we make relate to you know, headcount in different areas that are really uh, production sort of things attached to shipment levels. But it's, it's that kind of adjustment that you make in a time like this. What, what do you hear from customers these days? Is there less demand for things on the store shelves and that's part of this? It, it is. Um, you know, I think it's different depending on the customer. I mean, we have some, you know, off-price retailers that we do business with that are in a very robust place right now. But, um, you know, a lot of our business is tied to manufacturing. And there's been, a, you know, just a weakness that's there and been persistent, I'd say. As you can see there, she basically admits, you know, all the cost savings actions that ArcBest took in order to save money. You know, we just had our pay increase. You see how much our pay increase was. They cut the cost as far as leasing or renting trucks and trailers, you know, cost savings actions. That link I'll leave where I was talking about all that in the description box or actually in the upper right hand corner of your screen. I may insert a clip here. You'll be able to check that out though. We have a Nika Libre here it says ABF is awesome, but need more drivers to cover route areas like Carson, California and Torrance, California. Instead of one route driver should have at least three to four route drivers in those major cities to pick up more customers and a bigger yard at terminal 161 Long Beach, California. So I've been to Long Beach many, many times. I'm a Fontana road driver and I agree. I think you guys also need a bigger yard. You guys do a very good job. Shout out to Long Beach, California, man. I, I've never had to wait very long for a set there. Everybody's pretty, you know, pretty spot on at that yard. Uh, most of the yards I visit, everybody, all the yards I visited, everybody's doing a great job out here despite everything that's going on. Now, right now, like I said, I'm currently off on a work injury. Carlos Patron says ABF is a great company to work for. Something business says, oh, okay, Judy, us Panther employees getting the chop chop with zero notice and would like to know why. Now, those of you here on the union sector, we did get some type of notice. And look at the difference, union, non-union. This is their non-union sector. At some point as a laborer, you have to ask yourself some questions and you need answers to those questions. This here is a very good question. Why do, are those Panther employees not getting any notice? Is it because they're non-union? What's the reason really? I want you guys to understand if 51% of you decide you want to unionize, it must be done. A collective bargaining agreement must come to an agreement and be signed upon. If 51% of employees want it, it will be. And I think it would behoove of most labor, of all laborers, uh, to unionize. That is, of course, just my opinion. Only because I've seen all too well what happens on the non-union side. For example, this Southern California Edison worker was off on an injury just like me for almost two years. And there was no work for her when she came back to go to work. They had done hiring and she still needed to wait for a job. And that doesn't happen here in the union sector. So just little examples, little things I'm feeding you guys here along the way. And these are facts. Um, I'm going to see if she wants to do an interview about this and I'll get back to you guys on that. But everything I say here, you guys, is 100% true. There's a Desat DeLong here <laughs> says, thanks for continued updates. I'd rather trade the crypto market as it's more profitable. I make an average of $34,020 per week, even though I barely trade myself. For those of you that are into crypto, um, I remember I invested $700 in Kronos back in 2021 of either March, April, or May. So I made what? Basically $4,500. Well, actually $4,800 minus $700. So it was like a $4,100 profit. Very, very good. There is money to be made there, but it is a volatile market. And if you want to capitalize on it, you need to do it whenever you need to invest when everyone else is not talking about it. That's the time to strike. Ten Roads Express unionized. It's a a company that the post office uses, it's a contracting company. 
I think it was 300, 400, 500 employees unionized at 10 roads. Uh, so congratulations to them. I made a video on that as well. The FedEx UPS package car manufacturer laid off over 900 employees. And then there was a autonomous trucking company I did a video about that basically laid everybody off over 75% of their workforce and then moved to China. So you guys can see here, you know, stay updated on freight waves. And of course this, you know, I know people don't like to watch the news. Neither do I. As you can see YouTube is a very, uh, it's a very strong tool to use to get your messages across for the entrepreneur to get out what they, whatever it is they need to get out and whatever they, it is they need to capitalize on. I mean, that's the American way we capitalize, right? And uh, good people create jobs. And unions, uh, unions kind of prevent too much corruption from going on in the corporate sector. The corruption still exists, and there are many people that would argue that the Teamsters themselves are also corrupt. But at least the Teamsters fight for what's right for you and I as Americans in the United States of America to be able to retire after hard labor and to be, be compensated well and to have our families compensated well when it comes to health and welfare. Make no mistake that when there is corruption, it is removed, okay? And you hear about it far more often, justice being served in the union sector as opposed to the corporate sector. And that, my friends, is just the truth. Mr. By the Mile, please like and subscribe. If you like what you've heard today, check out some of my other videos that I have on here. This is our platform. Union laborers, you and I, this is our platform. Interviews are coming soon uh, with FedEx employees, UPS employees, state employees, former Yellow employees, an Oak Harbor employee, and more to come. Thank you guys for joining me today, Mr. By the Mile, your home for discussions based on my knowledge and experience in trucking. Take care, stay safe. All you truck drivers out there, new and veteran, all you Teamsters, see you guys on the road.